So here's the finished installation with the Fire HD 10 tablet mounted. And I hope you'll agree, I think it looks actually uh, pretty neat. So it's currently running in Screensaver and as I approached, the motion detector just uh, detected me uh, by the camera and it's uh, come live on my fully browser, a fully kiosk browser homepage, which is actually running a Sharp Tools uh, tile panel. Uh, that combination is, is uh, really nice to have and you can control your functions all directly from a, a tile type interface. Uh, you don't actually have to have um, the fully kiosk browser be at the forefront. Um, you can have it running in the background. Uh, so it's still actually running and it's controlling the screen. Um, and so it will still utilize the features that fully kiosk browser has to go into screensaver mode. How I have that set up is so that it, after two minutes of inactivity, that um, screensaver movie will come on. And after five minutes, it will turn the screen off completely. And again, it will come alive either by the motion detector from the camera, or uh, if it's dark in low light conditions, if you just tap on the screen, it will also come alive. So the other things I've done with the Fire tablet is uh, for initial setup, I went to the XDA developer site and downloaded their Fire tablet toolbox. And with that, you can do all kinds of great things. Um, the Amazon Fires do come loaded with a lot of bloatware uh, that you may or may not wish to choose, uh, but you can select to eliminate some of those applications, uh, maybe you don't use the Kindle or uh, the bookstore or some of those other uh, applications. Uh, and you can also download the, the Play Store so you can download your own uh, applications directly from there rather than be limited to what the Amazon uh, store allows you to access. So um, you can get rid of the lock screen, the ads, all of those things uh, by using that toolbox. In fact, I got rid of the, the complete Amazon launcher and I've uh, replaced it with the Nova launcher, which I tend to use on all of my, Amazon, uh, my Android devices. So I'm familiar with that platform, like the way it looks and the customization that you can get from that. So here you see what is now a standard Android tablet. I've downloaded a number of apps uh, to go along with it. Um, mail, the Maps, um, YouTube, the Play Store itself, of course, uh, and uh, we have Alexa, Smart Things, my Nest app, and some other uh, smart apps, and the Fully Kiosk browser, of course, and uh, full Google Chrome. So again, uh, you can leave it like this, and it will still go into the screensaver mode. Or if you uh, normally use the panel, then you can just bring that back up again. And there we go. So uh, again, my uh, hats off here to some of the contributions that helped to make that, uh, notably Sharp Tools, uh, Fully Kiosk Browser, and the uh, Amazon Fire Toolbox. Uh, from XDA developers. So um, hopefully that, that helps give you some insight. I mean, there's a whole lot of information beyond what I just described briefly in regard to using those uh, particular applications, but there's a, an overview as to how you can get your system set up to replace an old intercom system. Now let's take a look at how we address the wall stations. Here we're going to install Echo Dots and we're going to use a, a kit by Genie, which is uh, available on Amazon. I'll post the link below in order to mount it on the wall.
So here we have the old intercom station removed. Uh, just ignore that piece of masking tape there. It's just to hold the frame in place uh, before I put the, the new mounting plate in. Uh, that won't be there permanently. It's only just a construction aid. Anyway, so here are the original wires that uh, served the intercom station. And uh, earlier in the video, I explained how to wire those up to the power supply. And what I've done here is, again, I'm utilizing all four wires and I've joined the white and the red together to the positive and the black and the green together for the negative. And this pigtail actually comes with the Genie wall mount kit. It's actually uh, really uh, an extender cable. It has a male on one side, a female on the other, but we can just uh, cut a length of that off and utilize it for our adapter from our uh, from our old wiring. So what I've done here is actually I've uh, soldered it and heat shrink uh, wrapped it. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just use some wire nuts or a really good device I like for joining wires uh, without uh, tools. Our device is called uh, Posi Twists. So take a look for those on Amazon uh, if you prefer to use something like that and don't have the soldering capability. Anyway, so that's our power supply uh, ready to go. So now we're ready to install the, the wall mount kit. So here's our Genie wall mount. Uh, it actually consists of uh, this cup and there is a front cover for it. Uh, you can actually use the cover or not, it depends on your personal preference as to how it looks. And you can see how the cup is attached uh, by a bracket that just sandwiches behind the drywall and pulls it all into position. So you don't actually have to use any screws. Now the wall plate, um, I purchased separately, of course. Uh, normally the Genie mount it's a round hole that you cut into the drywall uh, push it through and, and pull it tight um, but because we have this uh, large square hole where the old intercom station used to go then we needed something uh, uh, bigger in order to cover that hole so i actually bought this um this this rectangular acrylic plate uh on from a company called uh, OC Wood Creations that I found on Etsy and he predominantly does these for uh, Nest thermostat uh, wall mounting um, and uh, But he has a custom service and that custom service is Ridiculously inexpensive. It was only five dollars more So I, I think a total of twenty five dollars uh, to buy the acrylic plate and I had him custom make it to six and a half by eight and a half and with a 4.4 inch hull for the genie mount to fit through. The genie spec actually tells you to drill a 4.5 inch hole, but I made up one initially on just a piece of uh, hardboard and at four and a half inches, it was just a little loose. So I went uh, slightly smaller on the spec for the hole in order to get uh, a, a nicer snug fit between the genie cup and the wall mount plate. Okay, so you can see the the bracket, how it's going to pull on the back of the drywall. And uh, that will be what holds it all in place without requiring any screws. Uh, one quick mention about this bracket here. This was the original bracket for the old intercom. You can see that the screw holes there. And somewhat of a similar design where the bracket fits behind the drywall and it just pulls tight when you when you uh, put the intercom on the front and um, normally you could remove that if, if your wall uh, mount is directly in in between two studs then you don't need the plate at all and you can just pull it out and throw it away uh, however in this case you can see it's been mounted uh, directly with a stud on one side that means 
the metal bracket won't actually be able to pull against anything. Uh, so what I did was leave the metal frame in place, took a pair of pliers and bent this section out. So now when the bracket uh, pulls behind it, it's got something to leverage against. So that's uh, um, essentially it ready to go. So we'll push the cable through the genie mount and go ahead and install it. Okay, so let's install the assembly in the wall. So you can see I've just pushed the genie through the wall plate and lightly attached the bracket with the screws just started. And the first thing, of course, we have to do is put the power cable through. Make sure that you pull plenty of that through. We don't want to lose it back inside the wall again. Uh, and the trick to install this is actually to turn it through 90 degrees so that it's actually the wrong way round and then we're going to turn it around until it's in the correct orientation and you have to orient it so that the bracket is behind that metal plate it will actually go with a little bit of effort it helps if you push the screws in and then we'll just slide it up So there we have it approximately in position and then all you have to do is snug the screws up and that will pull the bracket against the back of the, the wall plate. Feels quite snug. Might actually finish it up with a hand screwdriver feel the tension a little better but that feels pretty good so you can see it's now quite secure of course you want to make sure that you ended up with the with it correctly oriented so it's absolutely um, in the correct plane screw should be horizontal and then we plug it in push the excess cable back in to the wall and then we can just push it in and there you have it now you can either leave it like that if you choose or you can put the cover plate on the front uh, it makes no difference to the operation and it just depends on your own aesthetics as to whether you like it or not so that's it uh, i hope that uh, makes it uh, simple for you enjoy